so you see uh, your third unit is about uh, automated flow lines right uh, as the name suggests flow lines right flow lines consist of several machines or workstations which are linked together by work handling devices that transfer parts between the stations so right. you have several machines or workstations right several machines or workstation which are linked by work handling devices that is important because if there are several machines uh, linked together you obviously require a work handling uh, device right the transfer parts between the stations transfer of work parts occurs automatically and the workstations carry out their specialized functions automatically so another thing to specify that there are specialized functions of those machines right they are so set that they are dedicated for that specialized function Okay, each machine, each workstation is dedicated for that specialized function. So transfer of parts occurs automatically. That's important. There's automatic material uh, material handling involved, and the workstations carry out their specialized functions. Uh, and all of this is automated. Both the transfer of work parts and the operation of this uh, the specialized operation specialized functions of these uh, workstations. Okay, a raw part enters one end of the line, and the processing steps are performed sequentially. as a part moves from one station to the next so sequential right once it enters one uh, side of the okay why is this come here okay so you see sequential right once the part comes in it goes through these stations work stations right and uh, each work station is responsible as i said for a specialized function to perform and then after going to all the station it the parts leaves right so sequential processing steps are performed sequentially okay as a part moves from one station to the next it is possible to incorporate buffer storage zones into the flow line either at a single location or between every workstation so buffer storage zones what are those buffer storage zones that you are uh, making provisions for part storage okay in between the flow lines because once a part has left for example a part has left from first station okay but the second machine is still uh, processing the second part okay the uh, the the previous part so it cannot send the this part cannot enter this machine right so you have to have a buffer storage zone that's what is called a buffer storage zone that you are making provisions for parts to be stored temporarily okay so that uh, is possible to incorporate that right either at a single location or between every workstation so it could be at a single location uh, location right depends on the layout or between every workstation as i was explaining here it could be between any two workstations right so that's that and uh, it all is also possible to include inspection stations in the line to automatically perform intermediate checks on the quality of the work parts because you see i told you that uh, in order uh, uh, instead of checking the inspection i mean inspect instead of inspecting uh, at the very end you can in inspect after every process so that we know whether it is a good quality part or can should we send it for processing again or is it uh, basically for scrap because uh, can it be uh, remodified okay can you machine it again to bring it to the desired specifications or is it that uh, you have to scrap it so you can make those decisions only when you are inspecting in between so it is also possible to include inspection stations so you could have uh, these uh, workstations and in between you have inspection systems okay so this station 2 would be an inspection system right this this is also possible so they perform intermediate checks on the quality of the work parts manual stations might also be located along the flow line to perform certain operations which are difficult or uneconomical to automate i told you right that there could be some operations which are very difficult to automate or uneconomical that it will cost a lot of money if we automate it so in uh, in, uh, in such situations what we do is we do it manually right you might have observed in companies that there are still some workers doing some processes 
because it is difficult to automate that or uneconomical right the costs become high so they go for manual uh, stations in that case so those manual stations either it could be that the worker is doing it right or uh, depends on the uh, degree of automation right so that's what and uh, mechanized work transport system right i told you that it has to be automated the work transfer of parts has to be automated so the machines are automated the work part transport is also automated so what does this uh, we have discussed that right in your uh, uh, what do you call uh, automation migration strategy the third phase was that you completely automated so your transfer lines are an example of that third phase that you have now completely automated it not just the workstations but the material handling also so it's the last phase and when do you go for this kind of phase uh, this kind of step when you have full confidence that the product demand will be there in the future and uh, it is uh, expected that the product will survive the design changes will not uh, happen frequently okay in the near future it will not happen so you continue uh, so you go for this kind of uh, full degree of automation right is that clear okay and then you see objectives why are we going for these automated flow lines the objectives uh, to use these flow line automation is to reduce labor cost right because uh, you want to have these machines set up and uh, the labor cost would be minimized and uh, increase of production rates because uh, all of that is automated not just the machines but the material handling also so that uh, leads to your increase of production rate and uh, because you are not uh, sending those intermediate parts to storage zones right like for example automated storage and material handling system but you are having those buffer storage zones right so that's what makes the production of this uh, you have a high production rate because each machine is responsible for a specialized function so they it it does it process and send it to another machine and uh, there are no what do you call uh, delays involved here because of setup etc because it is solely for that one right standard product design so increase the production rate reduced work in process right because of that uh, immediate transfer to another workstation because they are linked right if you see you can you will be able to realize yes this image you see that's your 1 2 3 4 5 five uh, what do you call uh, five machine station line uh, five machine automated line you can say Uh, transfer line sorry five station transfer line yes five station transfer line so you have these first station second third fourth fifth and you have you see those yellow lines if you are able to see this one here, right here that's your automated automated material handling once this process is done this automatic storage uh, automatic material handling system will take it to another workstation you see how they are connected that's why we are calling it a line transfer line or automated flow line okay so reduces work in process uh, process minimizes distance move between operations right very clear right minimizes the distance that has to be moved between the operations achieves specialization of operations right i told you that specialized function i had highlighted right specialized function so each machine is solely dedicated for that function so normally if you are designing it for that you will mo install more and more features so you get bored by different out of it right so that's what makes it more uh, uh, feasible when especially when you are considering a high volume of production so achieve specialization of operation and uh, also achieves this integration of operations right so you are able to integrate operations also okay like for example you could uh, integrate two operations here solely for that uh, on that workstation you are going to do two operations like that 
so those are your objectives why you want to go for automated flow lines basically mass production you can say you can think of so it it does it 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 achieves all these benefits also right that's your inline type okay the types of automated flow line first category inline type so all machines are placed one after the other you have it inline right inline type of configuration of automated flow line you see here 20 station inline configuration so you have 20 stations right beside one another you see and there is palletized transfer line right pallet wash station so once everything is done it goes through this uh, wash station pallet wash station the pallets will be uh, sent there because after performing machining or welding or inspection right there might be some especially if this is important when you are considering this uh, uh, coolants right the coolants will fall on that pallet so you have to clean those things so that uh, pallet wash station so all of this has to be designed isn't it that's a sole dedicated system for that that's why we are going in automated flow lines and uh, this is where the system starts it goes through these and then the pallet is returned here. This is your free transfer line or buffer storage between the transfer lines. Right? Uh, that if you want to have, if you want to store some parts, for example, uh, this machine is busy. Okay? But this uh, first machine has sent the first part. Second machine is busy. What do you do? If it takes more time, you send it to this buffer storage system right and as and when the second machine is free you will take it back so that is there so this is your 20 station inline configuration okay a big system this was a five station that's 20 station right and then you have this segmented inline type you see it consists of two or more straight line arrangement which are usually perpendicular to each other but it still qualifies as a straight line configuration you see why even though it is not in line, you're calling it L-shaped, right? It's, it's form, forming an l shape. These machines are there. Five machines here and two machines are here. So parts come in, they go through all these machines and then here and completed parts. But uh, you're still calling it as a uh, straight line. Uh, and why is this uh, made? Why couldn't we go for a straight line? Why was this uh, needed? Any specific reason? You see here factory space or layout limitations. So if your floor space doesn't allow you to have two more machines here, okay, you can have it like this. Place those two machines here. So, but it still qualifies as inline, okay, because it is forming as uh, what do you call it? it is going inline, right? One after the other, one after the other. Here also one after the other. That's why. So that's what uh, makes it uh, straight line even though it is segmented right first segment second segment so you call it segmented inline type okay and then you have this rectangular shape configuration right as is indicated forms a rectangle and uh, it is u-shaped configuration right all because of factory space limitations or there could be some other reasons uh, that you're doing it and uh, this is your washing uh, station right the return of work carriers as we had seen in that example right pallet washing station so similar is the case here those pallets right will be sent here so that's why that it makes a rectangle okay those pallets which are coming which are giving out the parts and pallets are coming in right return of work carriers so they will be washed here and then again sent back. Starting work parts starting in will be kept on these pallets and they'll go through. Okay, doubts. If there are no doubts, then we'll end the meeting. It's already three. Right.